What's up guys, welcome back to my channel where I'm pretending to be Peter McKinnon until I'm also a famous YouTube photographer. Just kidding, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> welcome back to my totally unique content. Today I'm gonna tell you guys about some of my favorite places to shoot in downtown Vancouver. If you live in Vancouver and you've shot downtown, you've probably shot at a few of these places. If that's the case, let me know in the comments down below which one's your favorite and if I missed any of your absolute all-time favorite places. I'm gonna preface this video by saying that I haven't actually shot downtown a whole ton recently. So a lot of the photos that are gonna be in this video are from older shoots. Some of them are even from the first few months that I was doing photography, so, you know, don't judge them. They're not all recent work. At the time of shooting, I've only done one photo shoot downtown, like, since quarantine. So I'll definitely put some photos in from that, but I have two more scheduled coming th this week. So if I do wind up doing those and neither of them cancel, then I will throw some photos in from them as well. But in the off chance that I'm not able to do that, just, yeah, don't judge my photos, <laughs> they're old. So without further ado, let's jump right in. I have a few video clips that I took in one afternoon while I was kind of biking around there, filming for my location feature reel, which if you follow me on Instagram, you should go and check out my reels because I work really hard on them. I have kind of a route that I like to follow when I'm shooting downtown, and it starts at Hornby and Nelson, which is just off Granville Street and kind of right across from Robson Square and the Art Gallery. At the corner of Hornby and Nelson, you will find the Vancouver Law Courts. And these are these big concrete buildings with lots of beautiful leading lines and lots of kind of plants dripping down off of them. You have ivy, you have bushes, you have lots of concrete. So it's kind of a retro futurist aesthetic. And honestly, like, I absolutely love it. It's gorgeous at night. It's gorgeous in the daytime. So definitely check it out. So going up the stairs at the corner of Hornby and Nelson, you'll get to this beautiful little path. And if you walk along that path, and all the way to the front of the building, then you'll get to these waterfalls. The waterfalls are kind of a variable because in the winter they're turned off. So you have these big, huge windows with this big flat expanse in front of them. That's amazing in and it's of itself. I have shot there so many times, like so many times. <laughs> and it never really gets old to me. Every time I go there with a new model, I feel like I get something fresh. Love those windows. But shooting there with the waterfall, when I've actually never really been there in the summer to shoot before, except for this last past shoot, and I was like, that's why there's that big expanse that's got all that weird, like, there's kind of like a moat around it. It's a water feature. <laughs> so I took some footage of those waterfalls just to kind of give you an idea of how utopian they can look in the background of a photo, especially as they like cascade and you can see the top one coming down into the bottom one. Absolutely gorgeous. If you follow the waterfalls kind of along the path, you'll see these beautiful steps. The steps have, yeah, again, these beautiful leading lines and then there's multiple layers of steps. So if you're lucky enough to get a shot that doesn't have a bunch of people sitting on the steps, which is kind of rare, you will get all of these really amazing layers to your photo. And if you're able to include the waterfall in there somehow, all the better. In front of the steps, you'll find this beautiful art piece. And I've tried to shoot with this art piece a couple times and I feel like I've never quite fully mobilized how cool it can be in a photo, but I definitely always make a pit stop there because it does have all of these really interesting shapes and lines and different colors. And no matter what your model is wearing, you can probably find something in there and something in the art piece that can go together and like complement each other. You can also go kind of up the steps on the other side of the little path and you'll find another little path. This one goes to the upper side of the courthouse where there's this like long walkway and then there's this beautiful glass building. And I actually don't know what that beautiful glass building is, but that walkway gives you this beautiful like set of, and I know I'm using the word beautiful a lot, but it's super beautiful. This beautiful set of leading lines that go in towards the glass building. You've got the glass building silhouette. You've got the silhouette of the city in the background. If it's sunset, you'll have that beautiful like golden light coming through that silhouette. Absolutely gorgeous. Plants on this side, lots of concrete. Again, that like really strong retro futurist aesthetic. Absolutely beautiful. You gotta go there, gotta try it out. I've seen so many shoots there and they all look completely different because every photographer's style captures this gorgeous location in a different way. If you go back down the steps, back towards the art piece and then down even further, you'll get to the underside of the courthouse area where you're kind of on street level. And there's another art piece that you cannot miss. It's this big kind of red tube bit. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe it, but you can see it here. And shooting through it at night, it makes this really interesting geometric frame to your shot. 
if you can illuminate it somehow, I mean, it is illuminated from the bottom, but you know, lighting your subject from the bottom is not always the best idea. So if you can illuminate it from overhead somehow, you can really help balance out those two kind of forms of light and get some really beautiful images. To this day, even some of the earliest shoots that I did, the best shots from those shoots were at this red art piece. And I used to look back at them sometimes and I'm like, that's not a bad picture. If it was in focus, that would not be a bad picture. <laughs> There's a few other little places to like keep in mind around that area. There's a skating rink down below, which I didn't get any footage of. I've actually never shot there because it's always really busy, but I have seen other photographers shoot there and I don't know how they get a clear shot, but if you're able to, it looks like a really cool spot. There's like a big kind of glass dome that has some like interesting lines. And then if you go kind of around beside the red swirly thing, there's a set of stairs that kind of goes down into this pit. The pit's also really interesting to shoot. I've shot down there at night before and that was interesting. And then around the side, kind of going more towards Hornby Street, that's where you're gonna find this beautiful kind of, again, leading lines are the name of the game in these locations. Leading lines leading towards a reflective glass surface there's lots of really interesting conceptual ideas you can do here. It's really cool in the daytime. It's really cool at nighttime. I would definitely check it out. But around here, there's lots of underground parking garages that don't have like gates or ugly yellow kind of fences, that kind of thing. It's just like the concrete leading down into the ground, kind of surrounded by plants and things. And so especially at night, that's a really, really interesting place to shoot. Obviously watch for cars, but I've gotten a few shots leading down into those parking garages. You get those interesting leading lines, interesting shapes in the background. And again, that retro futurist vibe that I absolutely love. I'll probably do a night video as well because there's a lot of spots around here that look really cool at night, but are kind of unexceptional during the day. Um, for example, there's a Victoria's Secret near this area that's got these big pink light panels. During the day, it just looks like a pink background, but at night, you get this big pink glow that's actually really exceptional. But we'll save that for another video. The next location takes us away from the courthouses. Now, you want to walk down Alberni Street. You're going to be between Burrard and Thurlow. On Alberni Street, there's this little hidden alleyway, and it's really easy to miss because it's actually, you can't have cars there. You can barely have a couple people walking there, but it is actually a really incredible little spot. There's all of these reflective glass panes of different colors, really shiny metal. So you got a whole bunch of different reflective elements to work with. And then there's also just this fascinating silhouette. Like if you look up towards the sky, you have these huge imposing buildings in the background, and then these fascinating little architectural elements just scalloping the edges. So absolutely gorgeous. I haven't actually shot there, but I have passed by there many a time and taken many a picture on my phone, <laughs> really, really wanting to shoot there someday. So please go check it out because it actually seems like an amazing place to get some shots. In the same area, if you're continuing along Thurlow Street, it's going to be behind the alley on the opposite street. There's the Australian Consulate. Now this building, and let me just look at the address, it is 2050 to 1075 West Georgia Street. <laughs> this building is my favorite building in all of Vancouver. It is huge, it is imposing, it is brutalist, it is concrete, it is geometric, it is gorgeous. I feel like I take the same picture of it every time I go by it because I can't resist. It's just the squares are just so satisfying, like receding into the distance. Something about it is just so dystopian at the same time as being so fascinating. Um, so definitely check this place out. Um, I have a little bit of footage just to kind of show you the scale of things. It is going to be an undershot if you do want to get the whole building from the model, but I mean, I've taken a few like that and I'm really, really happy with how they turned out. I haven't shot here nearly as much as I would like to, but it's definitely on my route for all future shoots. It does suffer pretty badly from what I'll call businessman syndrome, which is where you've got really bored businessmen who just come and kind of stand and just stare and just watch as you're taking pictures and it's like, yeah, no, that's totally normal behavior. Totally just stop and stare at strangers in the streets, just completely just watch them like a TV. I'm sure they don't care. Like, rude. But anyway, yeah, if you don't mind getting this businessman syndrome, uh, definitely, definitely check this place out. This whole block is just kind of like a photographer's wonderland. It's not just this building. This building's great, but the building next door has all of these really interesting archways and again, like really interesting reflective elements, lots of glass, lots of windows, lots of different concrete like layers. We've got stairs. We've got kind of like this back area with like a little like, you know, patio area where there's this flat concrete, has the, the Australian consulate squares in the background. Just incredible shots, like this entire area, play with angles. You could honestly do probably an entire 45 minute shoot just on these two buildings and get enough content that it looks like you went around the entire city. One of my favorite like little visuals is this kind of archway or like overpass 
that's got kind of like this yellow reflective glass and then there's a purple reflective glass next to it and then you've got the blue sky and then in the background there's another concrete building. I've gotten some really interesting like street shots just of the architecture around there and then also it just kind of places, you know, if you have a model in the middle of this overpass with these big imposing buildings, it really dwarfs the model and makes them look small and whimsical in this land of giant concrete objects. So yeah, don't miss it. It's a beautiful place to shoot. 10 out of 10, would recommend. And just a short walk away from these two buildings is Burrard Skytrain Station. If you take the Skytrain, you've probably been to this station. The station itself is interesting. I've never really shot around there because there are often just a lot of people and there's food trucks and people getting on the bus and whatever. And I don't really want them in the background. If you're doing street photography though, it's probably a great place. But my interest is across the street from Burrard Skytrain Station, there is a park with these really interesting brick walls that I believe are a water feature sometimes of the year. At the time that I was filming, they don't have any water on them, but they do have really interesting kind of levels and stuff. I tormented a seagull around there for a little while. Um, there is a really beautiful building, I believe it's called Park Place, and it's got these beautiful like fanning lines. Um, they, it's got kind of like a, a over, what do you call it? Well, it's got like a, a cover <laughs> made out of glass with these, yeah, beautiful fanning lines. It's kind of a tan color. And so you can see the blue sky through the tan colored lines. There's a really big building in the background with a gorgeous copper roof, which is also a really interesting element. And then the park itself is usually kind of dead. Like there's people in it, but it's easy to get a clean shot. It's not like, you know, there's people everywhere, at least not the times that I've been there. So you can have a model kind of sitting on a bench with these big, beautiful buildings in the background. like. Seriously, the buildings are beautiful. They're not just like, you know, your regular office buildings. They're ornate and gorgeous. And there's a lot of plants and things as well, so definitely worth taking some pictures there. It also looks really nice at night. I'll probably feature it in my night video as well. Pretty much anywhere you shoot in this park, you will get some big, beautiful buildings in the background. Any direction, you're gonna get a nice skyline, especially if you shoot like maybe an hour and a half before sunset. If you go right at sunset, I find the buildings block out a lot of the light. Um, you can get some really interesting shots with the light just like cutting down the streets, which is really cool, but if you want to illuminate the park and see it in all its glory, an hour and a half before sunset is probably the perfect time. Once you're done shooting in this park, you can head back up Burrard and then down Georgia to get to the Vancouver Art Gallery. And you'll notice that I kind of planned this video in a little loop, and that is for your walking convenience. The Vancouver Art Gallery is probably one of the most classic places to shoot in Vancouver. It has a big, wide open, expanse of concrete with these little gardens and like bits of art, and obviously just the big, beautiful art gallery building, which, fun fact, will be the provincial legislature at some point in the future. So I was taking some of these pan over shots, you can kind of see. There's a couple hotels in the distance that are also these big, beautiful, imposing buildings. Got a really nice skyline pretty much wherever you shoot from this plaza area. There's also this white kind of art piece, um, kind of overhead area. It's illuminated at night, it's really gorgeous, but during the day it's also super interesting. If you go at the right time of day, it casts these really beautiful, really interesting shadows on the ground. And if you can get it in the backdrop of photos, it also looks just like a really interesting geometric visual element. There's also this kind of box thing over on the left hand side. I don't really know what it is. It's behind the white art piece, but it's got a really interesting metal texture on it. So especially kind of in blue hour, if you've got some colored gels and a few different lights, you can make some really interesting effects with this white metallic texture in the background and those colored gels. I've played around with it a little bit in the past. I definitely have it on my bucket list to play around with in the future. There's a certain time of day when the sun is going to be setting in the near future, but not immediately setting. And there's a beam of light that just comes through these two buildings in the distance. And it just kind of makes a spotlight and hits the square of the art gallery perfectly. Some of the most beautiful protest photos that I've ever gotten were in this spot at that time of day. And I believe it was a climate rally either in 2018 or 2019, but the weather conditions were absolutely perfect to just highlight the immense beauty of this rally. The last set of locations that I just wanted to mention today is a few sets of reflective windows. I'm looking for just like long, uninterrupted expanses of glass that create really interesting reflective elements that you can play around with. My favorite set is between uh, Nelson and Smith on Howe Street, so it's right across from the law courts that I talked about first. What makes this set of windows so special is that if you're shooting on Howe towards Nelson, you can get all of the traffic lights on that intersection between Nelson and Howe 
reflected in the glass, so you get two sets of lights, and then you can have your subject in the very middle. I've shot here a couple times. A lot of the time, we have to wait for the lights to turn red because it's nicer when they're all the same color. If you've got some red lights, some green lights, and then the yellow overhead light, it can be like a little bit overpowering color-wise. So I would definitely recommend, you know, waiting out those extra seconds to get a red light. <laughs> if you have an assistant, they can go and hit the button and just get, yeah, that whole kind of array of red lights reflected in the glass. It's gorgeous. It's a really beautiful effect. If you're shooting with a really shallow depth of field, you can get some gorgeous bokeh in the background. Absolutely would recommend checking these out. The other set of reflective windows that I would most recommend is on Robson between Granville and Howe. And it's kind of that Nordstrom building right across from Sportcheck. There is a beautiful set of reflective windows. And then there's also some really interesting architectural elements around there. There's like some white pillars and you can shoot this way to get a clear view into Robson Square or you can shoot behind you to get kind of this blank white wall. Um, I've shot here a few times. Again, it looks really cool at night because it provides a lot of light to really illuminate your subject, but also during the day because there's more reflecting in the glass. You can get some buildings reflected, you can get some passersby. If you're shooting without a model, it's still a great spot to do like street photography. So yeah, definitely check it out. Well, that is all the locations for today. I will do a nighttime video at some point. I just need to motivate myself to get downtown alone at night to take some pictures and some video. But until I do that, stay tuned. I hope that you liked this video. Do go and check out these locations and let me know down in the comments if I miss anything, if there's one that you would really like to see featured in my next video. And if you have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see from me in the near future, also leave those ideas down in the comments. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you wanna get a notification every time I post, don't forget to hit that bell icon. Am I doing YouTube yet? Am I doing it right? I think I'm doing it right. <laughs>